Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Positively Negative. Today I've got a little bit of a follow-up episode for you all. So a while ago I made a video about my Mamiya Flex C2 and in that video I went over the camera's functions and everything about the camera um, but I also mentioned that there were all sorts of add-ons that you could get for that camera like additional lenses, additional viewfinders and that sort of thing, right? Well, in the months since making that video I have acquired some of those things. So I kind of felt like just showing them off a little bit because they're really cool. Um, and also just talking a little bit about the actual usability of a lot of these things. So, in other words, this is what my Mamiya Flex looks like now. Uh, this is how it looks when I when I take it out to shoot. Well, it's either got this lens on or the or the 80 millimeter standard lens. So what's changed? What have I got? Well, I don't know what's the most obvious thing, but there's a left hand grip now, right? Which is a pretty cool thing. It just screws into the the tripod socket. Okay, it's not a Mamiya branded grip. Uh, I think it actually says Cherry on the side. Yeah, Cherry. Um, so I don't think it's specifically a Mamiya thing. I think you could probably screw this into any camera uh, tripod socket. Um, but I paid like 100 Rand for it, so who cares? And uh, this allows me to sort of handhold the camera. The other obvious thing that I've gotten um, is this 180mm F4.5, I believe. Yes, it's the F4.5 180mm lens. So it's like a telephoto lens. Um, something like a hundred millimeter in 35 millimeter terms. Let me just do my quick maths. Yeah, something like that. So it's, it's a, a shortish telephoto lens. And then I also have this viewfinder, this uh, optical viewfinder up here. Now, I have a feeling, I think this is the Poro finder. Okay, so I'm no expert in this, but I've done a little bit of research online and it seems that there are two different kinds of viewfinder that you can get for these cameras one was a um, had prisms inside it okay and the other one used a mirror uh, which was inferior and that was called the poro finder and i believe mine is the poro finder the mirror one and it's supposedly inferior but i think it's, it does the job really well for me as well um, my one actually has a built-in light meter as well this uh, viewfinder and the light meter is actually accurate, believe it or not. I can't believe it, it still works. All right, so how does all of this stuff change the usability of the camera? Well, for me, it's changed it completely. Um, now, this camera is like a really large sort of SLR kind of thing. It feels like using a more traditional SLR camera um, and I actually prefer it. I prefer using it in this configuration than using the waist level finder. And uh, I think that's for a, a number of reasons. Firstly, my eyesight is not very good. So I really struggle to focus properly. And I found that with a waist level finder, even with the magnifying glass, something about looking down into the waist level finder, I tended to miss focus a lot and it just got very frustrating to me. Now I know a lot of people say that they find it easier to focus through a waist level finder. If that's the case for you then like good for you. But for me I just found that it just didn't work as well. Um, if I was doing like a landscape or something at a very high f-stop then um, you know then I, it didn't matter. Then I could shoot you know at f22 and it wouldn't be a problem. But if I was doing something that required you know close focusing I, I found I often missed focus and I really got frustrated. Um, and I found that since getting this viewfinder where I can hold the camera up to my eye, um, I actually nail focus more often. I wouldn't say it's 100% of the time because uh, that'll never be the case for me, but 95% um, of the time I nail focus. Even though the image in this viewfinder is a little bit dimmer than the image in the waist level in the, in the ground glass, just the, the fact that it's closer to my eye um, uh, helps me to focus more easily. So it's really helped in that sense. What's also helped with this uh, shooting position is because I like to do portraits with this camera. Um, when I was doing portraits with the, with the waist level finder, I found the camera was always very low. All right, uh, just naturally you'd hold it down, down here at your sort of midriff. And so you'd always be looking up at people, which is all right if you're trying to create a sense of like, this is an important person who needs to look big and strong. But just for day-to-day -day stuff, I, I, I found that I would much prefer to be on eye level with somebody, okay? And now this setup helps me to do that, because now I can hold the camera to my eye, 
and normally I'm a little bit taller than the person I'm photographing. Um, so the bottom lens, the taking lens that they're looking into is normally at their eye level. Um, and so it works, it works very well for me in that way. So in other words, this attachment has, has, has worked wonders for me. The handle, the grip, um, has made the usability of the camera, well, it's just made it so much more usable. Um, in the past, because of its height, I always felt the Mamiya cameras, because they're so large as far as TLRs, TLRs go, um, sometimes they got like a bit top heavy and they feel like holding them like this didn't feel so stable. But now with an additional grip on the left hand side, I feel like the stability is so much better and I can hand hold, even with this long lens, I can hand hold shots um, and still get them, you know, crisp, which I think is just so cool. Um, so this grip is definitely something I would recommend getting. Like I said, it's not a Mamiya branded grip. It's just uh, some knockoff grip that just screws into the, to the, the, the tripod socket. So I would highly recommend getting one of these. They're not expensive. They're very cool. But of course, it doesn't make much sense to use this without a viewfinder like this one because to hold it like so and then look down the ground glass might be a bit awkward. So just bear that in mind as well. Okay. So, um, and the last of the additions that I've gotten is this short telephoto 180mm f4.5 lens. I got it on auction um, and the, um, the shutters were jammed. They were, they were jammed shut. Uh, so I got the lens for a very good deal. I think it was only like a thousand rand, which is like $80, something like that. Um, and I took it to get serviced at another 500 rand, I think. Got cleaned, got like lubricated and everything. And now it fires perfectly. It is, it is spotlessly clean. I don't know if you can see from there. It's spotlessly clean and so sharp. The image quality out of this lens is remarkable to me, as is the 80 millimeter. But I think this one, 80 millimeter, at least my, my one, is actually even sharper than that one. Uh, the quality that I get out of it is just remarkable. Um, and so it fires exactly the same as the as all the, the, the lenses of this type and this age of the Mamiya range. You cock the shutter on the left hand side and then you fire it uh, with this, hand, uh, with this uh, knob here. Okay. Now strangely I find with this, with firing the trigger with my thumb here, I actually find it to be quite stable at my eye. So if I cock the shutter quickly, if I, this is how I would hold the camera if I were using it right now to take a picture. I would hold it something like this, right? Where I'm sort of bracing the bottom with my right hand, holding the, the handle in my left hand and using my thumb and my eye to balance the camera. And it, it's so solid in this position, like even with my shaky hands, I can shoot handheld at like reasonable shutter speeds, right? And then I would fire the trigger like so. Perfect. And I find that to be really stable. So I could shoot like that. I mean, with the 80 millimeter standard lens, you could shoot at like 1 60th of a second, maybe even 1 30th of a second handheld um, with confidence. I really think so. Okay. So in other words, I feel like with all these additions, I've almost changed the camera. It almost feels like a completely different camera. It, it, the usability of it has changed completely for me. In this configuration, I far prefer uh, using it, right? And you've got to admit, it just looks really cool, doesn't it? If you walk into a, a venue with something like this, people are going to think you, you're very professional, um, very serious. Um, if only they knew all these things were really cheap. Okay. So it's all modular. It obviously, all comes apart. The, the handle just unscrews very easily. You can unscrew it like so. Okay, like that, it's gone. Okay, now we've got no handle, so we can just return to the traditional shooting process. The lens, I've already showed you how to take off the lens in the other video, I'm not gonna do that again here. But with this uh, viewfinder, it's very easy. You just unscrew the screw at the back, okay? I make mine quite tight because I feel like it doesn't make perfect contact always. Um, so I'm a bit nervous that it'll come off. And then you just lift it off, like so, right? Easy as that. I'll just show you what it looks like from within. That's what the, the viewfinder looks like inside. It's basically just a big mirror. And um, yes, you'd lose maybe a stop or two of, of light from your viewfinder. It doesn't affect your image, just affects what you see. It gets a bit darker, but um, to be fair, if you like hand holding a large camera like this, you're probably shooting in bright conditions anyway. 
um, and then you really it's it's really not too bad. I mean, if if I can see through it and I can focus through it, then you can too. Believe me, because my eyesight is not good. Then to put this uh, Poro Finder back on, there's two little hinges on the front part of the camera uh, at the top, and you sort of slide these little hooky things in there, like so. You just make sure it's stable and tight, and then you screw screw it back into place, like so. Okay. Now, one disclaimer. Strictly speaking, the viewfinder, the Poro finder, is designed for the later model cameras, the C220 and the C330. It's not designed for the Mamiya Flex cameras, okay? So I don't think it fits on as snugly as it does with those later models. It's definitely tight and it's definitely usable. I mean, I use it all the time. But there's just something about the way it sits on the camera body that makes me think that it wasn't exactly designed for this camera. Still works, but just bear that in mind. So don't go holding it, holding the camera by by the viewfinder, because I'm, I'm I'm scared it might come off. So just bear that in mind. Okay, the light meter in my finder works perfectly. Still, <laughs> miraculously, it's got a little on-off switch on the side here. So if you turn that on, the light meter is on, and um, it's got that sort of stick and and circle setup where you've got to try and match the stick and the circle together by turning these dials. Okay. And then when you get that the reading uh, through the viewfinder, you then transfer these um, settings to the lens of the camera. Okay, so it's not it's not coupled; they're not attached. So all you're doing here through the viewfinder is measuring the light, and then you must transfer that information to the lens. It's almost like using an external light meter. It's just in your viewfinder, if that makes sense. So yeah, those are the add-ons that I've gotten so far for the camera, and I really feel like the way it is now with the handle, which I've now taken off. Um, it really suits my needs perfectly. And like I said, it's almost like using a completely different camera. I think all I'm missing now is a, a wide angle lens. So I have the 80 millimeter standard lens. I've got this 180 millimeter short telephoto. And I believe there's a 55 or a 50 millimeter wide angle lens. And that's probably the only thing I'd, I'd still, I still want um, for my setup. But the truth is I, I've never really felt like I needed it. Um, I tend to use standard focal length lenses mostly. Um, and then... I quite like this 180. I must say, for portraits and things, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely lens. The detail you get out of these medium format negatives is just wonderful. One thing to bear in mind with all these additional sort of add-ons, it gets quite heavy. <laughs> it was heavy to begin with. It becomes even heavier with all the stuff on. But actually, I think that helps with the stability for taking handheld shots. So actually, I think the weight works in its favor a little bit uh, in that sense. All right, so let's take a look at some of the photographs I've taken with the camera in this setup. Some of them will be with an 80mm lens, but all of them will be um, shots that I've taken since the last review. So if you've watched the last review, these are shots that I've taken subsequently. And see if you can see which are the ones uh, I did handheld and which are on a tripod. <laughs> Alright guys, that basically sums up the short little video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Obviously, um, it wasn't a very technical review of the camera. If you want a more sort of full review of the Mamiya Flex C2, um, please watch my first review video. Um, this one is really an update and a follow-on to that video. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Basically, I just wanted to show off it's all this cool stuff. Eh? I mean, how cool does this look? Um, so if you are lusting after something like a Mamiya RB67 or a Hasselblad or something that's you know modular and got all these add-ons 
and you don't want to spend a fortune on those things, maybe get one of these and, you know, get these little add-ons for not a lot of money and, you know, that might just, you know, scratch that itch a little bit longer. Um, and like I said, it really does feel like a completely different camera now. One that is almost always begging me to take it out to photograph things with. Cool guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.